You know, sometimes people ask me, what is it exactly that you do? And I tell them that I make new things look old. And if they don't understand, I tell them to take a look at my mother and father and you'll understand. <laughs> uh, you'll see my mother and father out in the lobby during intermission. They have a little sign that says, we'll work for food with a white paper cup. Please support the elderly. My father's father, <clears throat> who was my grandfather, was the only person that I remember growing up who really loved to watch me sing and dance. And um, when I was six, he died. So I would go to his grave every single day at Calvary Cemetery, which is up here, and I would sing to him his two favorite songs. Guad il mare come bello, spiratando il sentimento, come tu sovai a cento. And his other favorite song. She wore an itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini that she wore for the first time today. Well, actually I got so much experience singing those two songs to my grandfather that that same year on this exact stage, I won first place in the Waterbury Park Department talent show. Uh, so I know that my grandfather had something to do with it. Anyways, I would sing to my grandfather every day, and then I would sing to the, the Guerreras were to the right, the Mancinis were to the left, and the Rinaldis were behind them. And, um, you know, I used to sing to my best friends, e even though they were just dead people. Uh, I really believed that they were listening to me and um, one day I was talking to my grandfather and I looked to the left and there was a brand new cemetery dump so I went over to the dump and I saw these really beautiful flowers in these friggin ugly arrangements and I thought to myself you know what? I could make these really beautiful so I started taking them apart and started making what I thought was beautiful. And as I was doing this, I thought, you know, I could sell these for a dollar a bunch at the entranceway to the cemetery, which, which I did do. And within one hour, within one hour, I made six dollars. Now back in 1957, that was a lot of money. So I decided to continue to do this every single day. And then I started recycling the styrofoam hearts, the Bibles, the crosses, the baskets, the ribbons, and I would sell them back to the local florist in Waterbury. <laughs> and uh, I lived right over here on Englewood Avenue in a three-family house. And uh, we had a three-family car garage. There were no cars, just styrofoam hearts, Bibles, crosses, <laughs> baskets, and ribbons. Uh, but by the time I was in eighth grade, I had saved $10,000. Now, I didn't know that at the time what I was called was a, an entrepreneur. And... Um, so I would go home every day, my friends would read the comics, and I would read the obituaries. And I could tell, I could tell, I could tell if the last name ended in A, E, I, or O, that they were Italian and there were going to be a lot of flowers. But if you were French or Irish, forget about it. There was nothing. They were miserable when it came to flowers. Anyways, by the time I graduated high school, I, um, I had saved $25,000. So when I started writing music about a, about a year and a half ago, um, I started writing about what I knew best, and that was the center.